Well, remember Bannerman, you know? Yeah, I do. Bridgeman, Bridge Bannerman. Man, Bannerman, whatever you want to call him. Tankman 2.0. Yeah. Well, people are now starting to create Wi-Fi hotspots using his slogans. His demands. Yeah, his demands, yeah. which I think is kind of cool. Yes. That's another way that it'll be hard for people to say who's doing that. Yep. Because, you know, you could have a mobile hotspot, you which could. you can give it whatever name you want, right? You could. And it's open Wi-Fi on those ones, I see. Yeah, it's open. You probably don't want to join it. Probably not, but it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. To get any way to get his slogans out there, it's showing you that the movement hasn't died. No. You know? It is wild, though. Yeah. Now, we got a pretty funny one here, okay? So, let's set this up for you. We all know that the Chinese government employs certain um, foreigners, right? Mm -hmm. We call them shills. Yeah. You know, they're basically, for lack of a better word, they're, they're kind of like traitorous. Yeah, it's like uh, they go, <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. I'll set this up very simply before yeah. you get into this. You have a situation in China where the Chinese government knows that if they use somebody that's not Chinese, particularly mm -hmm. Westerners usually. Yeah, white people. White people. They have this absolute fascination with white people, which mm. is, that's why you get white monkey jobs in China. Yeah, yeah. Basically doing a job just because you're white. Yes. Or a different race. Anyway, you get a situation where the Chinese government says, hey, if we have all these horrible policies and we restrict freedoms on people and we do all this stuff that makes people's lives horrible, but we get... You know, we sell it to our, our citizens by getting white people to say it's good. Yeah. Then it'll be an easier sell. And yes. that's how you get these positions where you get these white dudes sucking off China. Yes. Right. For lack of a better words. Mm -hmm. And promoting the Chinese oppression, genocide. Yeah. They'll, they'll make them do the most heinous shit. Yeah. Like say that it's good that they're genociding Uyghur people in, uh, because they're terrorists. Sure. They'll get them to go out there and tell the Chinese people, yes, we support uh, censorship because it keeps your country safe. Yes. I like that Zero COVID's great. Yeah, that kind and of that stuff. And that kind of nonsense. And they get people to do mm. this because, you know, they'll, they'll pay them, obviously. They give, they'll usually pay them in, in views, in uh, reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be in a monetary in jobs, incentive. They have monetary jobs. incentive. This guy in particular works for Chinese state media. Yeah. Okay. And somebody... He makes videos that are saying things like there's no genocide in Xinjiang or whatever. Yeah. So a person commented on his video and said, I hope, well, I can see you got paid handsomely. Hopefully you live with that the rest of your life. Karma will get people like you if it's not Uyghurs, people's tears and bloods. Okay. And he, so this is the, the guy who works so, with Chinese well, state set, media. Instead of what he probably, you know, he, what did he do? You know, he made a video. He made a video. Okay. Yeah. So that was a, he made a video basically saying that, uh, there's, no that there's no genocide. It's all fake. It's all Western propaganda type thing. Okay. You know, usual type China thing. scot free. Yeah. Yeah. And China yeah, did nothing typical. wrong. CCP did nothing wrong. They only hope we help Uyghur people. You know? Yeah. So he uh, replied, said, I can see you didn't watch the video. I feel very good about spreading the truth. How many times have you been to Xinjiang? Question mark. How many Uyghur friends do you have? Zero and zero. So zip it. You're getting muted now, buddy. Um, the, the problem is that the person that he said that to happens to be a Uyghur woman, an actual Uyghur activist, <laughs> a Uyghur woman, have a you Uyghur... been to Xinjiang? Yeah. No. How many Uyghur friends do you have? No. And then yeah. denies genocide. It's like zero. Yeah. How many times you've been to Xinjiang? Zero. How many Uyghur friends do you have? Zero. So zip it. Turns mm. out that she is actually, um, she was named on a Chinese black blacklist, says she's experienced online trolling, nasty messages and malware. Of course, she is an uh, Australian Uyghur activist. She is a Uyghur. Oh, uh, what a sick, so. sick man. Yeah. That's just so messed up. It's really messed up. Yeah. A person with ties to the genocide in yeah. Xinjiang. Yeah. Victim. Mm. Just got yelled at by a white dude that said there's no genocide in her land. Yes, <laughs> and told her that she's never visited her own her own land, her own country, or whatever her own place, and has wow. no no of her own wow. friends. Like what the hell? So it just shows you how out of touch a lot of these guys are. You know. <laughs> Anyway, I mean that's like that's just such a good Wumao up. thing, you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah. So what's been going on is uh, the Wu Chinese, Mao. yeah, Chinese government are, have been employing Wumao to go after Chinese people on the free internet. Yes. So basically, to on track, the real internet, on the real internet, to basically go track people down on Reddit. So Chinese people that are in China mm -hmm. using 
VPNs yeah. to go on Facebook or Reddit, even diaspora or diaspora, mm. uh, but mostly mostly Chinese people yeah. because they can track them down a lot easier. Sure. Um, and they're saying, hey, we know where you are. We know yeah. what you post on. You better be careful. Don't break the law. Yeah. And this is a great example of what Wu Mao are uh, when they're not attacking other people in different countries for slandering China. They're attacking mostly their own people. Yes. Uh, for daring to participate and criticize the Chinese government on yeah. free the free internet, as we call it. Yes. Yes. So not not don't don't want to tell them to be careful just be aware of like what watermarks you're leaving around you know the here's the thing i mean so you can hide there, there's something that i've always said that we have a certain privilege here mm -hmm. and our our privilege is that we're foreigners you know yeah. well obviously we're not yeah. you know when we were in china we we're foreigners and we we're also yeah. foreigners to china so if we criticize the chinese government we will become an enemy we will be attacked yeah but the repercussions against us are far less than the repercussions against the Chinese national. Yeah. Because they will absolutely destroy their lives. Yeah. yeah. And they will go after their family and they will yeah. make every piece of their life a living hell. Yeah. So if you are a Chinese person who speaks out against the Chinese government, you need to protect yourself and make sure that you're very careful about remaining anonymous online, basically. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, you can see some of these comments here. They're saying things like... Watch out your speeches here. Someone posted something against China and got called by police. Mm -hmm. uh, what you said are bullshit and anti-China. How dare you post things like this? This The Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter are anti-China apps. Behave yourself. Do you think you are safe to talk here? China has unofficial groups in Reddit to watch you traitors. You know, that kind of nonsense. And they do. They're not lying. No, they do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, just, just, you know, what's crazy too, is that there mm -hmm. are so many, uh, subreddits mm -hmm. that are Chinese, that are Chinese language for Chinese people, subreddits that are anti CCP yeah. that have been shut down. Yeah. Yet there are so many pro CCP ones like Sino and Genzadon. You know why? Ones. Because the, and this is why we find it's very unfair with a lot of what we do on, on YouTube is that the Chinese government employs these unscrupulous piece of shit Wu Mao to go out and mass flag. Yeah. So they will go out and they'll see there's a, there'll be a subreddit that's anti CCP. Yeah. Okay. So they will all go and mass flag it as being like hurtful and defamatory. They'll and, say this person, yeah. oh, they use my information. That's me. Or, or they they just flag it as being yeah. like politically bad. insensitive or bad or Chinese racist or whatever. Doing it. And because of the but the thing is it's the mass flagging. Yeah. It's yeah. this huge they've got unlimited resources to go and flag and right. complain about things. And so Reddit has a terms of service, right? Yeah. And they will. They'll look at certain things. And if there's enough complaints saying that it's racist or it's uh, whatever, you know, they'll be like, okay, and they shut it down. Right. The difference is, is that the groups that are anti-CCP, number one, they don't have the numbers. And number right. two, they're not petty enough to go and do false flagging uh, runs and, and so on on other groups that are, yeah. like, that, that are pro-China. That's right. So that's why you get the pro-China subreddits and the pro-China people out there. They never have to suffer this in, like, relentless attacks of mass false flagging that right. we do that's right. why you know my last video got age restricted mm -hmm. if you go look at my channel which destroys a video by the way mm -hmm. it got age restricted but other channels that showed the exact same footage didn't not at all mm -hmm. you know it's Yo. a completely unfair thing <laughs>